HTC XR Elite is a compact standalone VR headset with PC VR gaming capabilities that supports hand tracking and full color pass through. Sounds familiar? XR Elite seems to be the direct competitor of not even Quest 2, but Quest Pro, but only for two thirds of Quest Pro's price. But I needed to see whether they work well enough to take on the Meta Beast. After all, the headset may look great on paper, but if the performance is subpar, then it's not gonna go far. And the first thing you notice when you pick up HTC Vive XR Elite is how small and light it is. At only 625 gram, it's 100 gram lighter than Quest Pro and also about 100 gram heavier than Quest 2. But because the battery is placed on the back, the weight is much more evenly distributed, which increases the comfort. It has a small form factor and the design might remind you of Quest Pro, but with one big difference. What is the single thing that users complain most about Quest Pro? It's that built-in battery that cannot to be removed. Well, XR Elite features not just a detachable, but a hot swappable battery with the headset able to work for several minutes before you plug it back to power. Sadly, the headset will only come with one battery in the box when you buy it, and so far I didn't get any information about how much the extra battery might cost. However, there is another cool thing that you can do with this headset that I didn't expect. By removing the battery, your headset turns into an ultra portable device that folds just like a pair of glasses, which is not only great for storage and transportation, but you can actually turn it into a pair of glasses by inserting these rubber tips on the arms of the headset, making it similar to the Vive Flow design. And your XR Elite can be used simply by connecting it to a power bank. You will maintain all the features of this headset in a much more compact size, and I was impressed by how comfortably and securely it sat on my head. From my first experiences, it looks and feels incredible, light, compact, comfortable and supporting fast charging. But to try actual VR experiences with Vive XR Elite, I was given the headset with the battery head strap and a little top strap which really improved the comfort. Such a simple construction, but it makes all the difference when wearing the headset. <laughs> Quest Pro. On launch, XR Elite will have a library of around 100 games, many of which are quite recognizable, like Demio, Hubris, Figman XR, Air Guitar, Hyper Dash, and even Virtual Desktop. During the demo, I tested four VR apps, Master Masterclass with Mixed reality, the first ever standalone version of Hubris, Kayak VR on PC VR, and a brand new Yuki update with a mixed reality mode. But before we dive in into my experiences with these games and the headset, let's quickly cover the basic specs of XR Elite. Pancake lenses, 4K resolution with 2K LCD display per eye, 90Hz refresh rate, and 110 degrees field of view. Vive XR Elite has a built-in diopter or adjustable lenses, so you don't need your glasses and also an IPD slider placed on the outside of the headset. It features hand tracking and RGB color pass-through with depth sensor, which they claim to be the best pass-through currently on the market, but of course we will need to see about that. First, I tried Maestro Masterclass. This game is a virtual musical conductor simulator. It's kind of like a rhythm game that you play with your hand gestures, as if conducting the orchestra. And here's the first interesting thing I've noticed here. Usually when using a headset like Quest 2 or Quest Pro, you use either a controller mode or a hand tracking mode, but never both at the same time. In this game, my right hand was holding the controller and my left hand was tracked by the cameras, recognizing the gestures which were a part of the game. I thought that this seamless transition between controller tracking and hand tracking was really cool, as many of us have faced this frustration of needing to clap multiple times in front of the Quest 2 in order to activate the hand tracking. And in XR Elite, this transition was a lot faster and smoother, and even incorporated in a game like Maestro. Describing the visuals on XR Elite is best when comparing it to Quest Pro. They both feature very similar resolutions per eye, pancake lenses, and a refresh rate. I also would say that they have pretty much the same FOV, but the major difference in the visuals was achieved by the local dimming offered by Quest Pro. Because of the local dimming, the colors on Pro looked more sharp, crisp, and contrasting when compared to XR Elite, especially because Maestro was played in this dark hall where black colors prevail, and if you compare the same image side by side, in the Quest Pro version you would notice how much darker those blacks look when compared to XR Elite. But that was pretty much the major difference that I've noticed. And the visuals of course looked much more sharp and clear when compared to Quest 2, if that's what you're looking for. In addition, this master update features the pass-through mode, and I also managed to test the mixed reality when I played the new Yuki update. Each VR experience in the HTC booth used a separate headset when testing a separate app. So when I was testing Yuki, I used a 
that different sample headset than I did when I was testing Maestro. And when playing Maestro, I saw very vivid distortions when placing my hands in front of me and waving them around. Very similar to what you see when playing with Quest Pro, with the main difference of the pastor being a lot less fuzzy on XR Elite. But when playing Yuki, I saw absolutely zero distortions, no matter how much I wave my hands in front of me. It is very likely that the ones I tried were still prototypes, and I sincerely hope that the one that performed better is the standard that they are going to go for. My only problem with the pastor was that during the demo, the depth sensor on the headset was disabled, so it was a bit disappointing to me because I was expecting this mind-blowing quality of pass-through, it was promoted as the best pass-through quality currently available, but because of this depth sensor not being turned on, everything looked kind of flat and reminded me of the quality I saw on Pico 4. In my opinion, being able to perceive the 3D geometry of the room is even more important than having a better clarity, because if you perceive the depth, then you can walk around and do things in your pass-through environment, which is the point of the pass-through environment. Also, I felt like the proportions on Quest Pro were more true to life than on Elite. Maybe it would look completely different with the depth sensor turned on, but this is something I will have to test if the developers send me a test unit so that I can update this review. And next I played Hubris, which was the first ever standalone version of this gorgeous game. If you're familiar with Hubris on PC VR, it is one of the most vivid, colorful, and realistic PC VR experiences, and I got to try the standalone version of this game made specifically for XR Elite. And what can I say, the downgrading that needed to be done on this game to run on a standalone mode is more than noticeable, as you look at much simplified textures of water, plants, soil, I mean, it's all expected, but it was definitely missing its wow factor from Hubris on PC VR. That being said, there was nothing to complain about Hatsa's performance when playing that game. Finally, I tried one PC VR title, Kayak VR Mirage, which was played wirelessly. The fact alone that it could be played wirelessly during CES with so many interferences was impressive enough. However, I had a feeling like what I saw was not the headset's top performance. The somewhat blurry textures and objects made me feel like I was playing on a low or medium quality, which is unsurprising because the game ran on a laptop and on a Wi-Fi connection. They should have offered an option for a wired connection just to show the full capabilities of this headset, because I had a feeling like it could do better, I just couldn't see it given the circumstances. And one cool feature that I sadly didn't get to try during the CES demo was wireless streaming from the Android phone to XR Elite. Basically, you can stream your content from your phone, like a movie or even a game on a giant screen that will be displayed on your headset, and you can even connect uh, the controller to your phone via Bluetooth. Given the small form factor of this headset, it makes it a great feature if, for example, you want to watch some movies or play some games on a plane. So it seems like when comparing Quest Pro to XR Elite, you win some, but you also lose some. So let's tally up some of the features on both of these headsets that are the same or similar, and also some features that you would win with both of these headsets. You can see that the resolution is pretty much the same at about 18 by 1920 or 1920 by 1920 per eye. The 90Hz refresh rate is the same, pancake lenses. The FOV is so similar to each other that it's not even noticeable, with Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Plus being a little better than XR2. Quest Pro is a bit heavier, and because their construction is pretty much the same, the better in the back, it means that the overall comfort of XR Elite should be better because the whole headset will be 100 gram lighter. And you'll get XR Elite for $400 cheaper, that's pretty good. Still not the cheapest headset out there and it will set you back quite a bit. And the strong sides of Quest Pro include local dimming, something that is a noticeable difference in visuals, eye tracking and face tracking that is built in Quest Pro but it is not built in in XR Elite. Of course, a huge library of games, there are over 2,000 titles, both official App Lab and you can sideload with side quests. The controllers are better because they are self-tracking and XR Elite still uses the controllers with the tracking ring on it. For now, I like the color pastor in Quest Pro better because it was depth correct. And Quest Pro is one of very few headsets that compatible with both Windows and Mac. And the wins for XR Elite will include a hot swappable battery and that's a big one. 
I think that this is going to be the main selling point of this headset, together with the small form factor allowing it to change into this glass mode and making it super compact. It also has a built-in diopter, which is, I'm kind of surprised that Quest Pro doesn't have it. Supports Android phone streaming, again, didn't test it, but it would be cool if it had it. It has a depth sensor, but I didn't get to see it either. And finally, one thing that I bet you wouldn't think of until you put on your headset is the light leak. There are absolutely no light leaks. The facial interface covers it completely, so you absolutely isolate it from your environment, which is something you cannot achieve with Quest Pro, even if you buy the facial interface for extra $50. I still have a light leak. And with Vive XR Elite, you get it in the box. It's right there for no extra cost. What is the verdict here? Is Vive XR Elite the game changer that will revolutionize the VR field and make VR mainstream? No, it's most definitely not. The price is still very high. The specs are still pretty average for 2023, with multiple headsets offering similar qualities, including Quest and Pico, and a relatively small game library with no exclusive titles, make XR Elite at best Quest Pro alternative for people who want to get free from social media control and have a headset that doesn't care about collecting your data. But in reality, it's basically a somewhat simplified version of Quest Pro without fancy features like local dimming, eye tracking, face tracking, and self-tracking controllers. But this headset does have a single huge advantage that so far no other headset offers, which is a marvelous form factor. Having a rather powerful standalone headset that can do pretty much everything that Quest Pro can, but in a form of glasses that can be easily folded or even connected to your power bank and with a hot swappable battery is the single biggest selling point of this entire headset. And in my opinion, is the only tangible win of XR Elite over Quest Pro. Is it worth $1,100? That's for you to decide. You have all the information to draw your own conclusions, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to check my CES 23 recap talking about all kinds of awesome VR tech I got to test, and of course my thoughts about the upcoming PlayStation VR 2, which is an amazing gaming headset. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!